Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, one God. As I shared last Sunday, the Gospel reading last week and the Gospel reading this week um, do form something of a, a, a statement in a sequel about sharing the word of Jesus Christ with the world. If you recall last week, it was presented in the parable of the sower. And the point that I made in that homily was we need to get past this idea that somehow giving people stuff, signs, newspaper ads, cards, paper, literature, whatever you somehow is sowing seeds and it gets them into the church. It's about individually sharing our faith with others and inviting them to church. That's the point of that homily. Well, this homily looks at well, what is that thing that we share with others when we're inviting them to come to our church. I'll do a little footnote here. You probably notice in my homilies that when I talk about sharing Christ with others, it's about sharing the life of the church. And I do make this point. There is this misconception in the world that faith as a Christian is a private thing something that I have, it's something I do on my own, and it's not necessarily related to a church, a church, or any church at all, let alone the church, the Orthodox Church. Jesus Christ left this church. So when we talk about a relationship with Jesus Christ, it's intimately linked with life in the church. Our faith is not private, it's personal, so there is a distinction. We do come to this as individuals, bringing who we are. All right, so that's the footnote. I mentioned the parable of the sower. Now let's look at the reading that we just heard. Jesus Christ casting these demons out of, the, out of this man in this region called Gadara. We hear both Luke's account, which we heard today, and during the summer, we heard here Matthew's account of this miracle. So it's familiar for us. Jesus is traveling in the area of the Sea of Galilee. He has left the area where he typically works, which is around the city of Capernaum, where there is a large Jewish community. And you can speak with people uh, within the same context. The area he's gone to is a Gentile area. The people here are not Jews. And what we see in this miracle is he's going, it, it, apparently in this story, he's going simply to cast the demon out of this man. That's all that's happening here. He doesn't stick around. He doesn't talk with other people. He doesn't do other things. He gets off the boat, heals the man. There's a little interaction when the townspeople come to see what's going on. And then he leaves. So it's very much about this man. And just briefly what we hear is the condition that he is in because he has been demon-possessed. He doesn't live in a house. He has no social connections with family. He's kind of this crazy man wandering around in the cemetery without clothes. And occasionally, because the people are so upset by his presence, they try and uh, essentially put handcuffs on him. But he breaks them and carries on. A very dehumanized position. He doesn't manifest any sense of humanity. He doesn't have the modesty of wearing clothes. He isn't able to conduct himself in a way that doesn't scare people. And by extension, he does not live in community with his family or his fellow townspeople. So Jesus casting those demons out into the swine that are drowned. We hear that the consequence is the man is restored to his humanity. So when the townspeople have, who have heard about the demons being cast out show up to see what's going on, they find the man in his right mind at Jesus' feet and clothed. Human, as it were. Night and day. There was a time before, there was a time after. And the old Protestant hymn, I once was lost, but now I'm saved. That very, very overt change that is being presented. Now what's interesting is the man's response to this healing. And we have a contrast that we can look at here. 
About a month ago, we heard the story of the rich young ruler, this man who says, what, can, what do I need to do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus gives him this message. Sell everything you have, give it to the poor, and follow me. And of course, the sticking point is, sell my stuff. He gets stuck at the very beginning. But a key thing to note here is the last piece. Jesus saying, follow me. That young ruler, the rich man, was being invited to be an apostle and follow Jesus Christ and do this work. Now the contrast we see in this story is that the man's response is, hey, I want to follow you. Basically he's saying, I want to be an apostle and do the work that your, your followers are doing and I want to learn from you. And Jesus Christ says, no, that's not your job. Stay put, but tell everyone of the great things that God has done for you. He's supposed to stay put and share what happened. So the contrast we can see, rich young ruler was basically being called to be ordained. It's a way we can think of it. The man who had the demons cast out was being told, you're a lay person and your responsibility is to just share this with other people. And so that is kind of the contrast that we see. We share our faith with others. So this gets to kind of the meaning. Well, what are we supposed to share and how do we do that? Well, we're given in this particular story a very stark contrast. The man who is in dire straits, dehumanized, possessed by demons. And then as if flipping a switch, that's all gone, and he's a follower of Christ. So in the form of our stories, we may have come across this at different points. A little thing to mark on the calendar here. Um, about 10 days ago, I marked uh, the 25th anniversary of my chrismation. So I could tell stories about how I was chrismated, how I became Orthodox. Uh, the problem is, I've been doing this for 25 years, and I don't talk about myself as a convert anymore. But that is where some of these stories can come about. Those of you who came to the Orthodox Church from somewhere else, the form of your story may be, here was my life before life in the church. And as I said at the beginning, life in the church is life in Christ. You could do that. I kind of question the value as someone who's been chrismated for 25 years, talking about converts and convert stories. I'm a little surprised when I go out and talk in other parishes or experience other parishes. There is a big distinction that is still made. And it's kind of this first class, second class citizen. Well, we grew up in the church. Well, we were converts. And who's the in crowd, who's the out crowd? It's about Jesus Christ. So it may not be about the convert story. And you may not have that because you grew up in the church. There's still a phenomenon in the church. There are people who grew up in the church and they just kind of did what they were supposed to do came for liturgy, participated, went to church school, just kind of did it, but it never really sank in. And then something happened. And it was the realization that I do have something special and unique in my relationship with Jesus Christ. And commit. I say, don't talk about converts. Uh, this sort of experience is called uh, reverts or retreads. They retreaded the tire, as it were. It's, it's still kind of silly. <laughs> Interestingly enough, a lot of young clergy who grew up in the church, this is the experience that they had. There was something, there was a moment where something was so compelling that they committed to the church and as a consequence realized they had a vocation to the priesthood and filled that out. But I think the vast majority of you have some experience of church. This is not just the, the adults, but the teens and the children. There is this element of, I come to church and I do this thing. So the form of what you share really comes down to, 
Why do you keep coming back? I'm not challenging you. Why do you? <laughs> it's not that. But there's a reason. Every Sunday morning, when you get up and you are laying in your bed and you say, I'm going to church today, there is a reason why you're doing that. And it has to do with Jesus Christ. So it's exploring that. How do I find Jesus Christ in that experience? And we can draw the contrast. If I didn't come to church, and if I didn't have Jesus Christ, how would my life be different? And I think if we're honest, we would look and say, my life would be a lot worse without Jesus Christ than with him. And so this is kind of the thought process in the form. Now the language and the speaking, and this is to kind of uh, demythologize a lot of what's out there, because I think a lot of this conversation about how do we share Jesus Christ with others and how do we do that is very much overshadowed by evangelical Protestantism. And there's a whole thing there about how that's done. And it's all very much loaded and there are issues with it. So I think when we talk about sharing Jesus Christ, we get uncomfortable because the picture we have is what evangelical Protestants do. And it tends to be not just sharing, but a challenge. Is Jesus Christ your personal Lord and Savior? Are words that we will hear. Beginning that conversation. I want to witness to you and give you my personal, personal testimony about Jesus Christ as my personal Lord and Savior. We're not doing that. We're sharing. And we need to be invited to share. So when we do this, it's when it's an appropriate point in a conversation with someone else. I understand you go to the Orthodox Church. What's that about? And then you can answer. Speak plainly. That's point one. When you talk, speak plainly. My life is better in the church, and I have this relationship with Jesus Christ because this is what I experience, as opposed to not. That's the plan. The evangelical stuff has all this terminology and code, and it's this whole thing. We have to figure out how to speak in code. We're not comfortable with that. And the person that we want to share it with, they're not uncomfortable hearing the code words because... It's a caricature out there. But if we just say, I find Jesus here, and this is how I personally find Jesus here, and why my life is better. Be factual. It is just that. This is what I experience. It doesn't have to get into all of these other things. And just be receptive to what people are responding to. A big part of this, again, goes back to a point I made last week. The whole thing about sharing our faith with others is it's about being personal, one-on-one -on -one with another person, and it's a relationship. And we think of our friendships and our acquaintances, and it's a give and take, and it is something that grows over time. We don't instantly become best friends with someone. We meet them, we're acquainted with them, and the more we talk with them, we develop a friendship. Same thing. We don't just go out there and, like the, you know, the evangelicals, here you go, sign on the dotted line. It's kind of the whole mentality there. There has to be a relationship. And we have this language. You see the wall. So and so sowed. I, you know, I sowed here. So and so you know, saw the harvest. So and so pulled it in. We make introductions. And a big part of this is all about what Jesus Christ does in the heart of that person. By sharing with someone doesn't mean that you are responsible for making them a church member. You share. If they have more interest, they'll ask questions. And you can answer them. And if there are questions that you don't feel comfortable answering or don't feel equipped to answer, there are other people in the church that can help. And if they're comfortable talking with a priest, I can help with that too. 
That's the thing. A lot of my work is meeting with people and answering questions. And it's you know, no strings attached. Some people come along, some people say thank you very much, Father, and they kind of move on. That's okay. But we have this image. The image that we're given. Tell the great things that God has done in your life. Share that with others. Without twisting arms, without using code words, without trying to uh, get people to sign a contract or anything like that. That's not the point. But this is something that we all do. I just want to come back to this last little point and then pull it all in here. I mentioned children and teens come to church. I know that the thrust of this homily is for the adults. But you, like mine, You've been baptized, you've been chrismated, many of you I baptized and chrismated, you are completely members of this church, like the adults. And so, your relationship with Jesus Christ and how to share that, that's something you have too. And you can think about too. And you can work. Finish with that. Glory to Jesus.